Hey guys, my name is Scott Niemeyer and I'm the lead pastor of High Point Church in Friendswood, Texas. I'd like to welcome you to our podcast. We believe that church is not just an event you attend, it is a family that you belong to. We also believe that it's God's plan for every person on their spiritual journey to know God, to find some freedom from your past so that you can discover your purpose and ultimately you can make a difference. And we exist as a church to help you on that journey. We hope you are inspired and encouraged by today's message. Let's jump in and let's get started. I'm talking about, man, everybody looks so great today. Man, turn to your neighbor and say, you look good. If the person that bought your outfit is here today, turn to them and say, I look good. <laughs> man, welcome to church. Happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. Man, we are just so excited that everyone came uh, to be able to worship God here at High Point Church. I mean, it is our honor and privilege that you would be here today. And man, I hope that you have felt the presence of God. I hope that we are uh, really opening the door for you to be able to experience who God is today. That really is our prayer. Uh, we do have a great, um, I, I think I've got a good message for you. I hope it's a great message for you. I know it's gonna be great, not because I'm giving it, because that's definitely not the case, but it's gonna be great because we're talking about the Savior of the world today. We're talking about Jesus Christ, and uh, we're talking about all that he did for us and how much love God has for us. Uh, before we get into the word, though, I do wanna just, uh, just declare today that this is Resurrection Day, and it is the most significant day that has ever been. Uh, resurrection Day is when everything for humanity changed. It was God's plan for us coming to fruition. It was really when, when his love began to be expressed in a very great and a powerful way. And that love goes on and on and on and it reaches really even today in the junior high auditorium in Friendswood, Texas, come on, uh, on this Easter Sunday morning, 2024. His love is reaching into your life today. I believe that with all of my heart. I do want to welcome, just take a moment real quick and welcome all of those that are watching online. We're so glad that you're with us. Maybe you are a shut-in. Maybe you are traveling today with family. Maybe you're at work or maybe you are just sick today. I don't know, but I want you to know we are so glad that you are here today. Come on, High Point Church, put your hands together. Let them hear you real quick. Come on. So glad you guys are with us. Welcome, welcome. You know, if you're a first time guest here, I know that you've been greeted already and, and connected with, but I wanna just give you a, a personal, heartfelt welcome. Uh, we really are so glad that you're here today and glad that your family is with you today and, and really believe that God's got some great things for you. You know, we never really wanted to be a church just for us. It was never the intention at High Point Church. It was never to be a church just for us. It was really to be a church for all those people that are searching for God. And I know that there's something inside of all of us that wonders about God. There's something inside of all of us that really is hungry for the things of God. And I just wanna encourage you today to open up your heart and let God kind of come in and reveal himself to you. He has a great way of doing that. He'll come in, he'll begin to love on you. He'll begin to just kind of meet you right where you are. And I believe that the word of God today will jump off the page, if you will, into your heart, and it'll change you from the inside out. And I believe that today is gonna to be a significant day for many of you saying yes to your next step in your spiritual journey. We really believe that with all of our heart. I also wanna just let you know this. I believe right now that our country, I believe America is, is really in a place of spiritual hunger. In fact, I, I think it, you know, I've, I'm 51 years old and I really think in, in my entire life, I don't know that I've seen more people hungry for the things of God than I'm seeing right now. And I believe that there's something on the inside of all of us just like, man, I want a real God. I, I want somebody that I can feel, that I can, that I can talk to, that, that I know is there for me every single day. And, and, and whenever we, we approach God that way, He's always there. The Bible says whenever we draw close to him, come on church, it says he's gonna draw close to us. And I believe that today he's gonna draw close to each and every one of us. You know, I also wanna say this before we get into the word. If you don't have a church home, man, there are probably 
many, many great churches here in the Friendswood community that I probably would even recommend, great churches. But if you don't have a church home, we certainly want to invite you to come and what I call kick the tires here, uh, you know, kind of see what you think this is all about. But man, we would love to have you and your family connected here. And, and we really believe that God has a place for you here. You've heard many people say it probably already. If you haven't, I want to say, and if you come back next week, you're going to hear it again. And that is this, church is not an event that you attend. It's a family that you belong to. And uh, I wanna say, welcome home. We're so glad that you are here. And if you're looking for a home, I believe that you have found it. Well, uh, let me just take one minute to kind of explain how we approach uh, here at High Point Church, our, our spiritual journey. Uh, we believe that uh, we've kind of defined this, this process of a spiritual journey based upon what the word of God actually says and how God has laid it out many times in scripture. We've put some language to that. And so I wanna just kind of share that language with you. I'm gonna preach a whole message on this language next week, but I wanna just kind of throw it out there for you. We believe kind of our approach to, to church is this. We believe that everybody needs to come to know God. Everybody say, know God. Knowing God is being in relationship with him. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that even today of how you can take that step to come into relationship with God. Then we believe that once you get into relationship with God, that we all need some freedom from something. I like to say it this way. We all have a past. Come on. <laughs> some of y'all are like, we ain't talking about that in church, pastor. You know what I'm talking about? Now listen, we all have a past, which means we all have something that we're maybe dealing with or processing through. For me, it was some father issues that I had. I, I've learned that so many of us have, have, have dad issues and things like that. But uh, for me, I was processing through some of those things and some of the things that were kind of in my family for a long time that nobody really ever explained to me. But I came across a verse one day that says this, who the son sets free is free indeed. And I'm here to tell you right now that we don't serve a weak God or, or a powerless God. We serve a God that has the ability and the power to set you free from whatever it is that you may be struggling with. So we all, we like to say this, you're gonna know God. We wanna help you be able to find some freedom that normally happens in our small groups. Uh, you may not know this, but even in the church that we have here, there's over 50 small groups every week meeting throughout the community. And those are like little churches where we sit in circles and we open up to each other. And we're like, man, what, what's going on in your life? Can I pray for you? Oh man, man, I, I've gone through that before. I'm struggling over here. Can you help me? And we begin to really find freedom through relationship and through reaching out to God and learning, learning more about the Father. And so I wanna invite you on that journey to know God, find freedom. And then we also really wanna invite you to go to the next step in the spiritual journey. And that's where you begin to discover your purpose. I don't know if you know this or not, but every single one of you has a purpose that is ordained by your creator. God placed things on the inside of you the Bible says before you were formed in your mother's womb, he placed things on the inside of you, giftings, talents, abilities, so that you can be kind of wired a certain way. And the Bible describes it this way. When we all come together, the Bible says fitly joined together. Every joint supplying one to another that life really begins to make sense as the body of Christ and we all begin to help one another and you begin to discover what your purpose is. And then we like to say this, that the next step in your spiritual journey is when you begin to make a difference. And man, there is no better feeling, there's no higher form of living than making a difference in the life of somebody else. When you realize that life is really not all about us or not all about me personally, but my life is really about others. And when I make my life about others and I connect that to the kingdom of God, you'll begin to find fulfillment in your life that I believe that the world cannot offer. Now the world has an idea about this particular thing. They actually believe that they came up with it, but how many of you know God is the creator of all things and uh, they may have phrased it a little bit differently, but God definitely, this is his idea first that we could all make a difference in the life of somebody else. In the world, they call that transcendence. It's the highest form of living. You have transcended to the next level. But I'm here to tell you right now, that's because your creator has created you to do something amazing with your life. You know, in America, there was a stat that came out a few years ago, I think it's still pretty accurate, that 87% of people in America live and die and never discover why God put them on this earth. 
Never discover what their God-given ability or talent is. And I'm here to tell you right now, at High Point Church, we wanna close that gap. We want you to discover what your purpose is so you can go out and really begin to make a difference and be fulfilled in your life. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Y'all ready for the word? Yes. All right, let's go. Let's pray first. Father, we thank you for today. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Just, God, we ask that the word of God would come alive to us. I thank you, God, that it would jump off the page and that our heart would be open, God, and excited about what you have to say to us, God, but also for us. God, I'm, I'm so grateful today as I'm reminded of your love, as I'm reminded of your plan, that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus to come and to die on the cross for our sins. God is a free gift, and we're so grateful today that Jesus defeated death in the grave and the God that he is uh, uh, living, obviously, Father God, and, and allowing us to live through him, Father. We thank you for that. And we just ask right now, Father, that each person here would open up their, their heart to the spiritual journey. It would open up their heart to a next step in their life. God, we thank you that today we will begin to understand about your resurrection and the life that you have for us. In Jesus' name, and everybody said... Amen. The title of today's message, some of y'all are thinking, I thought we were already preaching. Come on. Uh, the title of today's message, and uh, I want to definitely be respectful of your time today, is this, the resurrection and the life. How many of you know that we're here to celebrate today the resurrection of Jesus, and there's no denying that. That's why we're all here. So we're here to celebrate the resurrection but Jesus said this, and I'm gonna read the story in a moment. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. And what I think we do is we make the resurrection about an event, and then we never really step into the life that he has for us. But I'm here to tell you right now that God's got a plan and a purpose for your life, and we're gonna kind of look into how we can discover what that is today. Let's look at a verse and a story that took place one week before Jesus uh, was crucified, dead, buried, and of course, you know, three days later, rose from the dead. But one week before all of this happened, just before the Passover supper that Kelly was just talking about, he was actually uh, traveling around and he was heading to his friend's house and his friend had the name of Lazarus. As he was traveling to Lazarus's house, there were some people that stopped him and said, hey, a woman with the issue of blood reached out and, 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 and received her healing because she touched his garment. And another person, uh, their, their, their kid got healed. And he was just on his way because he heard that Lazarus, his friend, was sick. But yet on the way, he kind of got, got, if you will, sidetracked. That's the way we view it as humans. But it wasn't really sidetracked. It was God taking time to be personal with every person and every need, making sure that everybody got the attention that they needed and they deserved. Come on. And then he's on his way to, to get to Lazarus's house finally. We're gonna pick up the story in John chapter 11, verse number 17. It says, on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Verse number 21, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you just would have been, if you could have made it just a little bit earlier, if you wouldn't have stopped, you would have come straight here, my brother wouldn't have died. He says, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Verse number 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. This is a, a crazy statement. So Martha doesn't completely understand what Jesus is talking about. How many of you know sometimes we think that we know what Jesus or God is saying to us, but sometimes it's not quite the full picture of what he's actually trying to do in your life. Yeah. And that's what's taking place with Martha. Martha answered, now listen, Jesus, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. I, I know the dead in Christ will rise. I know that that's all going to happen one day. In verse number 25, what I really want you to see in this story, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. 
He's declaring two things to Martha, but he's also declaring two things to every single person that is here this morning on this Easter Sunday. I am the resurrection and I am the life. He's basically offering us two things. He's declaring who he is and he's saying that you have access to this same power. I am the resurrection and I am the, I am the life. He goes on to say, the one who believes in me, come on, the word belief is very strong there. The one who believes in me, even though they will, they will live, even though they die. Verse 26, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And then he ends this verse with a question. Do you believe this? And I'm posing the same question to you and, and to yours today. Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Do you believe that he has the power to resurrect and the power to give you the life that he's designed for you? Do you believe in the resurrection and the life? I want you to know that he did call Lazarus out of the tomb. He didn't just say he had this power. He calls Lazarus out of the tomb. He says, hey, move the stone out of the way. They're all, hey, like Jesus, listen, he's been dead for four days. It's gonna stink, like we should not do this. And Jesus said, no, no, move the stone out of the way. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, after four days of being dead, comes forth. When he comes forth, I want you to know there was some people that got excited that day in church. Come on, somebody. They were like, man, this dude was dead and now he's alive. This Jesus is not just healing people and setting people free. Now he has literally just brought somebody back to life. I wanna talk to you about these two things that Jesus declared that he was. And I wanna just throw this out there first. Uh, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. I think that's a mentality that we have. Man, Jesus is here, I'm bad. (laughs) Lord, I know I need to be good. So Jesus, he's just gonna come and hopefully he can help me be good. I mean, you know, no matter how much we try, we can't be good enough. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's nothing that we can do to work our way into his, into his goodness or into all. The only thing that we can do is to step into relationship with him and say, hey, listen, Jesus, you are the resurrection. You are the life. You're gonna, you have laid down your life for me. And so I choose to follow after you because I love you. So Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive came to make dead people alive. And here's the crazy thing is no matter how relevant or how much technology takes over and we have all these great things at our disposal today, I mean, I'm preaching out of the Bible on an iPad. Who would have ever thought that? I have a cell phone up here, not because I'm expecting a call, but because we're gonna do something with the tap here in just a minute. But all this technology doesn't change the fact that he is the resurrection and the life. Let's talk about the first one. He says this, I am the resurrection. The resurrection, the word resurrection means that it's bringing dead things being raised back to life. That dead areas of our life can be raised back to life. And you say, Pastor Scott, how do you know that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's look at Romans chapter eight and verse number 11. It says this, the spirit of God. I want you to think about that phrase for a second. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. So now we're talking about how did this actually happen? How did Jesus defeat death in the grave? How did he actually raise from the dead? It says the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. So now we know it's the spirit of God that did it, okay? Then it goes on to say though, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. Some of y'all looking behind y'all, like, who you talking about, pastor? No, no, you, 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 you. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of all of us. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, catch this, he will give life to your mortal bodies 
Do you understand that he's giving us a promise here that if you're going through something in your mortal body, that he will begin to speak life into the dead areas of your body. He's trying to say here, listen, this resurrection power was not a one-time event. It wasn't one and done on Calvary. Thank God for that. It is the thing that set everything into motion. It is God's plan for humanity. And we're so grateful that Jesus died for our sins. But I'm here to tell you right now, he didn't just die so that on that one day that you can have forgiveness of sins. He wants you to know that any dead area of your life can be resurrected again. Yeah, Say, Pastor Scott, what are you talking about? In every place of your life that you feel like you're dying right now. Okay, what, is, what, what does that mean, Pastor? What about relationships? How many of you have a broken relationship? I had a broken relationship with my father for years, decades, decades was finally God breathed life into that and I was able to resurrect that relationship. What about our hopes? Some of you have been hoping for something for so long, it hasn't happened and you're giving up on the fact that it might happen because you've lost hope. What if God begins to breathe life into your hope? What about the dreams that you've had? What about the dreams in your heart? And many of the young people are like, yes, I've got dreams, but I can see some of the others that are a little bit on up in age and you're thinking, man, Pastor Scott, that's great, but I don't really dream anymore. Well, I'm here to tell you today that if you are still sucking air, God is not done with you. It's okay to dream a little bit. It's okay to go back to some of the things that maybe you thought you might do with your life, begin to resurrect those things with the power of Jesus Christ. What about your faith? Maybe somebody in the church has done you wrong. Maybe you have a, a broken expectation from organized religion. Maybe you think that all churches are the same and everybody's just, you know, it's just a, just a bunch of people just going through the motions. There's nothing really real there. I've been there before. I've, I've had a broken expectation in my faith and there's been times in my life where my faith was dead. It wasn't dead, it was completely on life support. And I needed the, the breath of God to breathe back into my life and say, you know what? I still love you, Scott. I'm here to tell you, and somebody needs to hear that today. Jesus is telling you, I still love you. Whatever you've done, whatever you think is so bad, I still love you. Still got some great things for you. Got a plan and a purpose for your life. Oh, you, you've got such tunnel vision. I, I, wanna, I wanna break the tunnel apart, begin to show you the goodness of God in your life. I wanna begin to show you some great things that I wanna do in your life and more importantly, through your life. What about our health? Man, so many of us struggling with our health these days, right? So many, so many things that come up because we live in a fallen world and, 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 and there are things that happen within our health. The enemy attacks, but how many of you know that I believe that even in your health that God can begin to resurrect the dead things in your health and begin to breathe things back to life? Come on, somebody. You say, Pastor Scott, how do you know that? Well, in the Bible, it says that by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. So we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus on this day, but do you know when he hung on that cross, it wasn't just about the salvation. It was also that by the stripes of Jesus that you could be healed. I know you may be thinking, that's, that's craziness. The word of God is full of illustrations of how people were healed. I'm here to tell you right now, my, my brother-in-law, Kevin, we talked about him last week. We were on a mission trip just, just three weeks ago. Had a terrible zip lining accident. When I found him on the line, he was hanging like this, lifeless. And I ran underneath the line, I began to yell, Kevin, Kevin! No movement. Kevin, can you hear me? And I thought to myself, he's dead. And I began to pray. I'm like, God, please help him. And I saw his arm move. And I'm like, okay, he's not dead. Get him off the line, down. You heard the whole story last week. Finally got him to the hospital where they could begin to put him back together in Guatemala City. But I'm here to tell you, just three, two and a half weeks from the accident, we were there three weeks ago, but two and a half weeks from the accident, Kevin's sitting on the third row right here with some resurrection power <laughs> happening in his life. He walked in here today. I don't think he's supposed to be walking, but he walked in here today. So don't tell me that God doesn't care about the things that you care about. 
Don't tell me that he can't begin to move. You say, well, that was a bad situation. I'm gonna tell you right now, the enemy is out there and he's trying to make some bad situations. But how many know God can redeem every bad situation? He can take dead things. He can begin to breathe them back to life. Come on, somebody. All right, y'all gotta listen faster so we can go eat lunch. Here we go. The resurrection of Jesus gives you the power to close the gap between the life you are living and the life you could live. So wherever you are in your journey right now, if you're thinking, man, I'd like to be able to take some steps on that journey, I'm here to tell you right now that the resurrection of Jesus gives you the power to begin to close that gap in your life. I put this in your notes, the resurrected king can resurrect me. That's a song, I love that. Think about that for a second. The resurrected king can resurrect me. Some of that, some of y'all, that needs to be inside your spirit today, inside your heart today, where you leave here and you're just saying that over and over in your head, man, the resurrected king can resurrect me. Come on, the resurrected king can resurrect me. Come on, the resurrected king can resurrect me. And I also just wanted to add and follow up with this, Jesus is the risen king. He is the risen king. He is the resurrection. Let's talk about number two. He is the life. Jesus says, I am the life. And I just wanna say it this way, Jesus offers us abundant life. Some of y'all maybe have never heard that before. Do you know that Jesus loves you so much He doesn't just offer you the life. The life he's describing is an abundant life. Do you know that he's got good things in store for you? He's he's got some, some future and some purpose in store for you. He's got good things on the horizon for you. John chapter 10, verse number 10, it says it this way, the thief, everybody say the thief. You don't know who the thief is in the word of God. The thief is the enemy or the devil. So he's the thief And it says his only job, the thief comes only to steal, to kill and destroy. But he says this, this is Jesus talking. But I have come so that you would have life and have it abundantly. Another translation says, I've come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. How many of you know abundantly is good, but more abundantly is better? Come on, somebody. So the enemy has a plan for us and he's trying to, He's trying to, you know, use that plan, win him wherever he can. But I'm here to tell you right now, Jesus also has a plan for you. His plan is life and life more abundantly, to have it abundantly. So I ask myself this question, if Jesus has come to give us life, how do I experience the life? You may be thinking the same thing, like, okay, pastor, this is Easter, great. Like, when I get out of here today, how am I gonna go experience this life that you're talking about? Well, uh, first of all, I want you to know, I, I'm gonna do my very best over the next just few minutes to, be, to, to answer that question for all of us because I believe he, Jesus has got some things he wants to say to us. So here we go. I asked a few people this week, I did a little mini survey, all right? I like surveys, that's why you did the tap thing and the survey. I like surveys because it gives me information to be able to help better serve you guys. But I did a survey and I asked mainly people that are on the church team, the church staff, okay? And so uh, I asked them this question, what, what was the charge against Jesus because that sent him to the cross? Like, what was the official charge against him? What, what were the charges that he was brought up on to have to go to the cross. And I'm happy to say that everybody on your church staff did not know the answer. (laughs) So we got some work to do. But you know, as I thought about it, I didn't really know the answer either. And so I began to research and think about this. Let me tell you what Jesus was charged with. He was charged with being the king of the Jews. He was charged with being the king of the Jews. You say, well, why would somebody charge him with that? Well, they were, obviously he was getting more and more popular after this whole thing with Lazarus. They had Palm Sunday, they were all worshiping him and rode in on a donkey and did the whole Palm Sunday thing. And man, th- there was some awesome things and they were calling him their king. Well, the issue with that is at this time, there was Roman occupation in Jerusalem. And so Caesar didn't really like the fact that somebody else was stepping up and saying they were gonna be king. 
And so he's like, this is not gonna happen because I'm the only ruler around here. And if somebody else becomes a king of a people group, they may get too powerful and too strong and begin to take over. Little did he know how much Jesus was gonna take over. But he was charged with being king of the Jews. Let's look at Matthew chapter 27, verse number 11. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor questioned him saying, so you are the king of the Jews. How many of y'all know Jesus is cool? If you ever wanna just look up how to be cool, just go and look at what Jesus says to people because he is like the coolest cat ever, all right? He's the coolest, this is how he answers that. So this is the governor, he's arrested, he's standing before this guy and he says, so you're the king of the Jews. And Jesus said to him, it is as you say. Okay, I think Jesus complimented the governor by making him feel like he already knew the answer to what was happening. I want you guys to leave here today and I want you to just take that phrase with you. In fact, let me just tell you, how many of you are married in here? Okay, about 15 of you, the other of y'all don't know if you're married or not. (laughs) It might be part of the problem. Guys, I'm gonna set you free. I'm gonna give you a cheat code right now. Come on, guys. Y'all with me? Two guys, great. (laughs) Whenever your wife says something to you, just say what Jesus says. It is as you say. (laughs) Some of y'all know it's true already. I don't know why you say something different. You're just gonna cause trouble. Just smile. Yes, dear, it is as you say. Teenagers, when your teacher asks you a question, it is as you say. (laughs) Come on, you don't, somebody else comes up to you, maybe, maybe somebody at work asks you a question. Hey, it is as you say. Jesus was cool. Verse 29 of Matthew 27. A few verses down, after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head. You know about the crown of thorns, it was long, long thorns. As they pressed into his head, it poked into his his skull. Blood and water was flowing from his head. And they put a reed in his right hand like a, a fake scepter. They knelt down before him and they mocked him saying, hail, king of the Jews. Oh, hail, king of the Jews. Making fun of the king of kings, making fun of the savior of the world. They did not know what they were doing. But yet, here they they put this crown upon his head. Crucifixions were relatively common during this time, but what was not common about a crucifixion was somebody getting a crown of thorns put on their head. They were making fun of him for him declaring that he was the king of the Jews. Second song we sang today, the title of the song is Nobody. Nobody gets to wear that crown except one person. Why? Because there's nobody in that grave anymore. He's come out of that grave. There's one person that can wear that crown and he is the king of not just the Jews, he's the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. Matthew 27, let's skip down to verse number 37. And above his head, they put up this charge against him, which read, so if you wanna know the official charge, it was written on a sign above his head as he was crucified with this uh, crown of thorns after he had been beat and whipped and stripped and blood and water flowed into the side. And it goes on to say this, this is Jesus, King of the Jews. I wanna ask you just for a moment as we close, Let's get personal just for a minute. If you would allow me as your pastor to speak into your life and get personal just for a minute. Here's my question for you today on this resurrection day. 